Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Noelle. Back in November, I was invited to this little event by Fitbit. It was a fun fitness event and I, we were, you know, encouraged to bring our dog, so I brought mine. And I was able to try out the Inspire 3 there for the first time. Now, I was a past Fitbit user, so I already had the Fitbit app installed on my phone. And so it was quite easy to like get this Fitbit Inspire 3 all set up and ready to go to engage in the activities at that event. So then I took the Inspire 3 home and have test driven it for these past three months. I originally recorded this a, a vlog review for the Fitbit Inspire 3 last week and then I watched it back and realized that I spent more time talking about the functionalities of the Fitbit app versus what you can actually get out of the device. This is the Fitbit Inspire 3 in morning glow and black colorway. The morning glow is the band which is a silicone band and the black is the plastic body of the actual Fitbit. And it's available at Digital Walker and Beyond the Box, both in their stores and also online. They have storefronts on Shopee and Lazada, and they also have a website. Let us now drill down into what you're gonna get when you buy a Fitbit Inspire 3. The Inspire 3 has a three-axis accelerometer, so it's able to detect certain exercises that you select, like walking, running, swimming, that sort of thing. So you don't even have to start an activity on the watch. It will detect any of these things as long as you keep them up for a sustained period of time. Yep. It also has an optical heart rate monitor on the back of the device. It has vibration engine so you get some haptic feedback when you touch the watch and you also get vibration alerts when uh, the watch sends out alerts whether it's alerts from the watch itself or alerts from your phone notification alerts from your phone when you're connected to the watch via bluetooth it also has red and infrared sensors which allow it to detect blood oxygen levels, SpO2 levels. And I'm sure this is something that we're all familiar with at this point because of the importance of oxygen levels during this global pandemic. It also has an ambient light sensor which allows you to kind of, if your watch face is activated, you can cover it with your hand and that will shut off the watch face. It's also swim proof up to 50 meters down. So you can take the Inspire 3 swimming. It will log your lengths for you and estimate the speed at which you were going. Its battery lasts for up to 10 days of a two hour charge time from zero to full. The watch itself contains, can contain its memory can contain seven days of very, very detailed second-by-second -second data. Um, it will also store up to 30 days of data summary. So it will crunch all those numbers into a summary and you can watch the, uh, you can look at the past 30 days of data summary on your watch. It also is primarily touch screen. So there is no physical button. There is a side button button it's it's not really a button as much as it is uh kind of like a sensor so um touch activates that button that's the technical specs for the fitbit inspire 3 now fitbit was acquired by google <laughs> the last time i used a fitbit device it was it hadn't been acquired yet but in the past few years google has steadily started to fold in fitbits um, business into the overall alphabet Google business and so to use the Fitbit with your Fitbit app you need a Google account and um, I guess I think that's where Fitbit now stores a lot of the data that it downloads off your watch it stores it into your Google account 
Um, what that does, uh, according to some reviews I've read, is that it gives Google access to your mobility data, which it will then crunch into its big data sets. So that's just something that you might want to keep in mind if, if you're trying to keep things separate. Like for instance, I know some people, they want to keep their email separate from their search engine results separate from their map activity so that no one big company knows their movements, their purchase habits, their search, uh, search terms, that sort of thing. Um, so basically when you do any sort of data processing with Google products, you have to expect that at some point they're going to combine all your data sets and profile you whether as an individual and then market to you specifically or use you as part of a larger data set so that they can market to certain groups effectively. So that's, some, that's a consideration when you're getting a Fitbit is that Google will have access to your data. Let us look at what we have inside the box. It's pretty much your basic box. The Fitbit was stored here. Obviously, I'm wearing it now. Then when you pull out this little compartment, you will see that there is a spare uh, band. The lower band is this is the larger band. Um, what I'm using is the small band because my wrists are small. So you can replace it and you don't have to buy a separate accessory to have a larger wristband. And it also has the proprietary data and power cable. A proprietary meaning that its connection to your Fitbit is special. So it's not like so you can just pick this one up off the street. Uh, it connects to your Fitbit through a magnet uh, contact. There you go. All right. And you can use a wall adapter or a USB port in your device, in your like your laptop to help charge this Fitbit. How did I use my Fitbit Inspire 3? I used it to track steps, sleep, activity, um, heart rate, yes. All of this information you can see on your Fitbit app even without a premium membership. Now, all Fitbit products these days will push you to, uh, to acquire a Fitbit monthly premium membership, but the Inspire 3 includes a six-month free Fitbit premium membership. So you can try it out and see if what's offered on premium is something that you will want to keep paying for the rest of the time that you're using this Fitbit. But I'm here to tell you right now that if you're not really looking to drill down into your data and really have it crunched and analyzed and a report spit back out to you, if you don't want to have to, if you don't wanna, or if you don't need to access very historical data, like years past data, then you don't really have to get the premium membership so for premium, you get a daily readiness score. It tells you if you're ready to work out. You get that sleep profile. You get advanced sleep analytics, a wellness report. So it tells you if you've been doing fine. Mindfulness sessions. So you get meditations for sleep, meditations for stress, relaxing sounds, stories for sleep, that sort of thing. You also get access to a library of video workouts. So these are pretty good if you don't already have access to um, home workout video sessions. So if this is your only, only membership, then I guess then it would come out like really value for money. And then it also has recipe inspiration to help you eat properly. So I've just generated a wellness report. Um, and let me find that in this folder. So this wellness report is generated by your Fitbit app 
from all the data that it downloads from your Fitbit Inspire 3. So there you go. It's a 30-day overview and it tracks number one, resting heart rate, number two, weight if you record it or if you have a Fitbit um, weighing scale, which I don't. And then it tracks activity, minutes in heart rate zones, sleep, menstrual cycles, that sort of thing. And then you can take this wellness report and take it to your doctor. <laughs> If you just need a device to track your activity for the day or the week um, and then track your sleep habits, track your heart rate, um, if you need a device on your wrist that just links to your, your smartphone so that you can get notifications on your wrist without having to pick up your phone every single time, then this device also works properly without Fitbit Premium. On the whole, I think its step count was pretty accurate. Like I wore this with a different fitness tracker and they would usually buzz about me tra logging my 5,000 steps within a few seconds of each other or a few minutes of each other. So Fitbit ha is generally recognized as being able to track steps quite accurately. So there you go. Now, when it comes to tracking activities, as I said before, there are some activities that are automatically recorded and tracked. You can go into the Fitbit app to kind of change the duration, like the start and end times for the activity that you want and track, and then the, the app kind of reshuffles all the data and shows you an updated summary of that activity you did. However, uh, I have also seen some kind of some strange activity logged automatically where I actually didn't do that sort of activity. I, I've seen the watch and I'll show it to you again right here. And you can see that it actually tracks the walk. It tells you the overall distance that you've walked during the day, but the, the time that the activity is registered on the app, it's like Monday at 12 midnight that's kind of weird right it shows here that i swam on thursday at 10 26 pm and i did absolutely nothing of the sort so the automatic uh activity tracker can get on the fritz tracking your runs the watch connects to your phone for connected gps and that basically helps it determine distance, pace, um, in real time using a GPS track. And the GPS track was pretty accurate when I, uh, when I used my Inspire 3 to track uh, my runs here in the village. Uh, the, the, the track did snap to the roads instead of being little squiggly lines. And I think I used, I used a different watch where I connected GPS was still kind of inaccurate. Fitbit's connected GPS function with the Inspire 3 is very accurate. For tracking bike activities, it just tracks calories, heart rate, and time. And it doesn't have the option to connect to an external sensor so that you can also track distance. So basically, it's just time logged and you can tell the watch what kind of activity you were doing. Now for swim, I've used this so many times while swimming and it kind of, it can track lengths um, more or less accurately as long as you're swimming a standard stroke. I'm saying like front crawl, breaststroke. I haven't tried butterfly because I can't do butterfly. Backstroke as well, it will track that sort of thing. But if you're doing drills where you're doing mostly kicks, the no arm move, movement or whatever, I'm not sure that the Fitbit Inspire 3 can track the lengths that you do um, for drills. And I, I can't really say for sure because the display for the watch when you're swimming, it, it has a water lock. 
So it you can't really scroll through the metrics while you're doing the activity. You have to save the activity and then view the metrics on the app to figure out, I mean, to, to drill down into how you perform during the set. Uh, and that also kind of impacts, let's say, rest periods at the wall. You need to be looking at an external clock to be able to see yourself sticking to uh, a certain recovery period. Like for instance, I will swim 25 yards. I use a yard pool, 25 yards, and then stop at the wall for 10 seconds and then go again. If you're just, if you're using only this as your timekeeper, when you flick your wrist, it will not tell you the, the number of seconds. It basically will tell you that this watch is screen locked or, or water locked. So kind of difficult. You need the pace clock by the poolside. And regarding the, the water lock, it's really hard to disengage that water lock. And you know you have to double tap to disengage that lock. But when you double tap and it disengages the lock, sometimes it's hard to scroll the screen so that you can either pause the activity, restart the activity, or save the activity. So uh, that was one of the biggest annoyances that I experienced. I think it might have been the only annoyance that I experienced with this watch is that it's really hard to control the screen when you're in the water. So if you do intend on getting this watch and then using it during a swim or any other wet activity, make sure that you can dry the hand that you're going to use to control the screen so that you don't get frustrated and keep tapping away at the screen because you can't get, seem to get it unlocked. Yeah, overall, if you're looking for a cheap fitness tracker, it's not really cheap, it's affordable. It's something that won't break the bank. But you can use, uh, you can use a, an installment plan with Beyond the Box and Digital Walker to, be, to make this lighter on your pocket. I think the Inspire 3 is a good entry-level fitness tracker. Um, using connected GPS, runners will be able to track their distance and time quite accurately. You just need to keep your phone on you and Bluetooth on. It will track other things like cardio and yoga and HIIT, that sort of thing. So it, it helps you kind of keep a log of the activities that you do. So it also helps make some positive reinforcement towards creating healthier and more regular exercise habits. I liked it so much. I love the form factor because it's so sleek. And guess what? You can wear this the, just the fitness tracker, you can wear it all clipped to your body. You have to buy a separate uh, tracker container and a clip to yourself. What I do normally is if, if I want to not wear this watch strap, I can just remove the straps like this. It's a quick release. I remove the straps and slide this tracker into my bra. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, it's a good uh, fitness tracker for those who are looking for something to help encourage them in their fitness journey. If you're a more uh, dedicated or serious kind of athlete who wants to drill down into your swim splits or your bike splits. Uh, this might not be the one for you, but if you generally just want to be more healthy and you want to track your fitness activities, you want to track your wellness scores, your heart rate, your oxygen levels, your sleep, then the Fitbit Inspire 3 is a good tracker for all of those things. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you found this informative, entertaining, all of that jazz, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you again next time. Bye!